In this video, we'll be discussing about the PI3K AKT signaling pathway, which is also the first part of mTOR pathway. But here we'll be more focused towards the AKT signaling first. Before we start our lecture, I remind you this video is sponsored by Nerdy Tutors. It's an on-demand tutoring platform which connects students with the best matching tutors in minutes. The platform is super mobile friendly. It allows students to chat with the tutor right on the phone. Nerdy Tutors understands what sort of problem a student is having and use smart algorithms to find the best tutor to explain the concept. Use the link in the description today and get $10 off your first tutoring session. Now getting back to our lecture. The PI3K, AKT, PKB molecules regulate diversity of downstream proteins that affect the cell cycle, cell proliferation, cellular metabolism like translation, transcription and many other cellular activities. To start the signaling pathway, we have the cell membrane as shown in the diagram. And on this cell membrane, we can see the RTK monomers. This receptor tyrosine kinase monomers are the receptors for this pathway and in this pathway these receptors are the insulin receptors. But it must be noted that these RTK monomers need dimerization first in order to get into its active state. Here in this diagram we have the insulin as the signaling molecules for PI3K AKT pathway. To drive this pathway, first of all, insulin molecules binds with the insulin receptor or we can say RTK monomers as shown in the diagram. And binding of insulin towards RTK monomers initiates the dimerization of RTK monomers as shown in the animation. Once we get the dimerization done, the tyrosine kinase domains of receptor tyrosine kinase are autotransphosphorylated in a process of cross-phosphorylation as shown in the animation. Then from here, the downstream signaling starts. First, we see we have the SHC protein. This protein binds with the phosphorylated tyrosine kinase domains, as shown in the diagram, and itself gets phosphorylated. Then there is GRB2 protein. If we see the structure of it, it has got SH2 domain and it has got SH3 domain. The SH2 domain of GRB2 binds with the receptor tyrosine kinase, as shown in the diagram. Whereas its SH3 domain is still unoccupied and for this we have SOS protein. The SOS protein comes in and binds with the SH3 domain of GRB2. The SOS is a gaunin nucleotide exchange factor which interacts with RAS proteins in order to turn GDP into GTP state. So here RAS GDP is turned into RAS GTP that's its active state. And this RAS GTP can turn on MAPKERK pathway. But we need this RAS GTP molecule for our AKT PKB pathway. So let's keep this here. Now getting back to our pathway, that's our PKB pathway. First of all, the phosphorylated kinase domain mediates the binding of IRS1 adapter protein towards the insulin receptor as shown in the animation. The IRS1 protein itself gets phosphorylated by the action of receptor tyrosine kinase. Once IRS gets phosphorylated, it opens up the binding sites of IRS protein. And just after that, there is a PI3K protein that comes in and binds with the IRS protein. If we see the structure of PI3 kinase, its complete structure, it has got two domains. P85 domain, which is the regulatory domain, and it has got P110 domain, which is the catalytic domain. And remember, first of all, it's the P85 domain of PI3K protein that binds with the IRS protein as shown in the diagram. And then after that, the catalytic domain, that's P110 domain of PI3K kinase comes in and binds with the P85 domain. So we get the complete PI3K structure. But it is still inactivated because P110 needs activation. And it is by the RAS GTP that activates the P110, that is the catalytic domain of PI3K protein that enables the PI3K into its active state. Now PI3K is enabled. It will catalyze the conversion reaction now. That's PI3K acts on PIP2 and converts it into PIP3. So here in this reaction we see it adds one phosphate to the PIP2 structure converting it into PIP3 as shown in the diagram. Then this PIP3 interacts with PDK1 and PDK2 proteins and drives the recruitment of AKT or PKB proteins towards the membrane. We see here in the animation, the AKT proteins or PKB protein is then translocated towards the membrane 
where they interact with PDK proteins. The PDK is the master kinase. It phosphorylates the AKT proteins at different sites. We can see in the structure of AKT protein or PKB protein, it has got PH domain, kinase domain and regulatory domain. First of all, the PDK1 phosphorylates the AKT or PKB at tyrosine 308. Whereas PDK2 phosphorylates regulatory domain of AKT at serine 473. The phosphorylation at these sites enables the activation of AKT or PKB protein. And this active AKT or PKB protein can lead to numerous pathways. First, we see the AKT can act on TSC2 or TSC1 protein. The AKT PKB molecule inhibits the TSC2 protein. And the inhibition of TSC2 protein can activate the mTOR pathway. Then this AKT or PKB molecule also can drive the NFKB pathway. The AKT can activate the IKK alpha through phosphorylation and this IKK alpha then drives the NFKB pathway. Another important crosstalk between AKT pathway and MDM2 or P53 pathway is the phosphorylation of MDM2 molecule. The AKT protein drives the phosphorylation of MDM2 at serine 186 and serine 166 and this phosphorylated MDM2 can go into nucleus where it binds P53, thus rendering the P53 for degradation. That ultimately inhibits the P53 mediated apoptosis. Furthermore, AKT or PKB also phosphorylates Krebb molecule, which then binds CBP and ultimately gets into nucleus for transcription of target genes. Then we have crosstalk between AKT PKP signaling and FOXO signaling. The AKT translocates into nucleus where it phosphorylates FOXO protein and drives expulsion of FOXO protein from nucleus to cytoplasm. And here in the cytoplasm, FOXO protein binds with 1433 protein that retains the FOXO protein in the cytoplasm, thereby inhibiting the FOXO survival signaling also. So these are the major pathways that are driven by AKT PKB protein through various regulatory proteins. In the next video, we'll be discussing the extension of this pathway in the form of mTOR pathway. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Do consider supporting my work on Patreon and also make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks.